to the interim, the core interim. Uh, sorry, we couldn't have it last week. Uh, on the interim list, we do have, uh, for those who just joined, uh, in particular for those from OMA, we do have in the to do list for the future to have the discussion on resource directory and authorization in general and how other SDOs can apply. This is an interesting topic, but maybe not today because we didn't have enough quorum for, for having that discussion today. But uh, hopefully we can have it in the future and I will keep you updated on that. We will keep you updated on that. And who is we? Uh, it's uh, Marco and I, the chairs of the core working group. Um, we were duly noted that we have to present the note well also in the interim meeting, so here it is. Um, as you know, the note well applies to all uh, ITF communications. Um, it's not just uh, uh, for IPR considerations, but also the general goodwill and participation of the uh, people in the in the meeting. So I think I hope you all know it. I hope you all have read it. And I think without further ado, we can go to the presentation. I think it was uh, Mohammed, right? Presenting or was it Johan? Uh, yeah, yeah, John, John will, will, will yeah. take the floor, yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, so then let me uh, close this. And... So. My apologies for coming in late. I just the came, meeting time came through for 4 p.m., which I guess is European time rather than UK time. So I was caught on the hop. Share content. By the way, Marco, you started the recording. I... Yes, I did. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Francesca, for a reminder. Sure. Okay, this is getting myself. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, apologies for the late delay. As I said, uh, I, I thought it was in an hour's time because it came to us 4 p.m. That's my fault. Should have double checked. Anyway, so we're talking here again about the uh, the new uh, blockwise option sitting here to do within the co-op sort of core situation here. So, uh, are, are you sharing? Sorry, I'm sharing my screen. Yes. Uh, okay. And there's nothing shared right now. Okay, so let me just go back. Why it's not sharing? Cisco message, Cisco here. So the core working group went up. I went in for share content. I want to share PowerPoint. Sorry about it. Does that work now for you? Yes. Yes. Right, my apologies. Okay, so, <clears throat> right. Uh, so this just is a slide that we had last time, just uh, outlining the, the background of what uh, we need the particular options for. And so <clears throat> since we last talked, um, the changes that we've made, we're now in revision two, some of the updates we've made, we added an applicability scope just to kind of uh, make sure that uh, we couldn't cause network congestion and recover from stuff. Uh, but so we clarified on the, the, uh, the use of probing rate and we've also introduced something called max payload so that you can send up to max payloads in a stream. You then have to have a pause and then you can send another max payloads. Uh, John, b before, b before we can move on, on the, I would say on the other changes we have made for the particular side, just we, um, we, um, we pause on this, uh, I, would, I would say on this aspect related to, um, to the congestion control. And to just make sure if I would say, people if have um, read the I would say the text that we have we have included in the draft, particularly to uh, to describe the I would say the particular case that we are targeting and the how the congestion control is is managed and the the new guards that we have defined in the in the draft and whether we we are I would say we are okay with that or if this is something um, that is missing or I would say more consideration about the congestion control that we have to uh, to, to consider in the I would say in, in the draft because I, we don't have a slide specific for that one. I wanted that that we uh, we can pause on it right now to to have some discussion on the, on the, on this particular point. So I know that at least Carson and Christian have read the draft. So I don't know if, from your 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 point of view, you think is that the uh, the current text, if it is, I would say, if it is sufficient, or if you have to uh, to uh, 
to take into account other, I would say, other other points that um, in in that in, the, in that area. <clears throat> so I, um, customer money, um, I haven't uh, done a detailed analysis. I I like the idea of uh, starting out with a max payload of ten, which is essentially the the initial window ten principle we are seeing in in other. A situation so that should be acceptable um, the part that I'm not sure about is whether max payloads can actually be constant um, so um, but th th yeah again we, we are having the problem that we are trying to do congestion control in a situation where we already know everything is maliciously uh, congested so uh, we, we may not be able to do the uh, usual uh, things here, and I think starting out with ten is is a really good way to to be a good citizen. In, in, in the comment on that on that part. Otherwise, um, John, please uh, can, can go forward. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. And, yeah, uh, thanks for the feedback about the 10 max payloads. We certainly think that's a good idea. Uh, okay, detailed description, block three is no longer repeatable. It, it has to be a single entry within the, the option list. And there is the uh, creation of a new response code which describes what's, which blocks are missing um, from the server perspective so that uh, the client can retransmit them as, as is appropriate. It follows in along the lines of what Christian came up with, the 4.0 type thing in this. So then uh, we've added in the RFC 8613 definitions uh, to do with the OS call type stuff and there's been some general text tidy up as well as uh, trying to make it clearer in terms of um, how you do stuff. <clears throat> so into more specific uh, block three updates, the A bit, the all bits has now been removed. We've now left that as unassigned. Uh, we did look at uh, putting in streaming at some point, and that could be a streaming bit, but we left it as unassigned, but as a reserve bit so that uh, things could be extended by other protocols, perhaps or other usage or RFCs later uh, for usage of the block three put uh, thing here. In terms of the <coughs> block uh, ID, we need to be able to differentiate between different puts or different bodies that are being sent to, to the server so that if there is an error loss uh, type environment, uh, the server can work out that this particular body uh, block that's come in is for a different body as opposed to the same body. We need to differentiate. We did look at using tokens uh, as a way of having a, a, the same token for a particular body of data being sent. But the issue there is that if there's any partial errors with any of the blocks that go, we need really to identify in the client which block is giving an error. And so we need to have unique tokens. Uh, to define uh, which block is giving trouble or whatever it may be. So uh, we've had to go and stay with a block ID concept sitting here. Um, we've said that it can't have a value of zero because that's a special case of the block four. And we've also said that tokens must not be empty again so that we can uh, pick up on errors should there be a the server try to tell us something's not working correctly for whatever reason so we can handle that particular block. Part two is... Um, uh, sorry, John, uh, Karsten yeah, has a question. Go ahead. Yeah, um, in my review that I sent you whopping two minutes before the start of the meeting, um, I'm asking whether we cannot use the request tag that is in, in a different draft that has just passed working group last call and is going to the ISG now. Um, so the request tag is uh, seems to be pretty close to block ID. Why do we need something new? Okay, so uh, one of the things that uh, we thought about was having a block ID in a separate option, which is effectively what you're talking about here. Um, the issue that we had with there is that then we would be changing some of the semantics of how block one is used. So if we had block one plus this uh, request tag, we'd be, ch be changing how block one is used um, and we would effectively be superseding uh, the block RFC because uh, we're not expecting responses to come back. Uh, 
these kind of things. So it, it is just changing the semantics of how block one is being used. And so we decided at this point to continue with block three because then we can change the semantics um, as is appropriate. Oh, I was not talking about uh, uh, trying to use bl the block one option. Um, I was talking about not changing the format of the okay. block one option okay. and uh, use the request tag option that we are already standardizing for, for pretty much what block ID does. I have, I have no issue with that at all. So providing we have the block three gives you the ability to change the semantics, but the format of block three is the same in how it's laid out. And then the separate option that contains the request tag, that works absolutely fine for me as uh, straight off the top of my head. Great. You may think of something else, but it, in principle, that sounds fine. So maybe we should have a, an uh, offline on mailing list discussion how exactly that would work with a request tag, but I'm, I'm pretty optimistic that uh, it would work well. Um, my, my practical problem with block three is that it's uh, moving into 64 bit uh, space. And uh, we, we have been trying to avoid that. I mean, it's not a blocker at all, but it, it, if, if we can avoid it, um, and we already have an option around that that has the right semantics, then I think we, we should be using that. Yeah, um, that makes, makes perfect sense to me. The, the other note is there is no such thing as an empty token. Uh, so a, a token that has an empty representation is the token zero, which is not different from any other uh, token number. Okay. So I'm, I'm not sure I can interpret the, the last bullet on this slide. Okay. The way uh, it, it, it has to be a token that has a length. Yeah, but, but, but why are you excluding the number zero? The number zero is a, is a nice number like all other numbers. Okay, so the, the thinking behind that was so that we can differentiate between uh, responses that come back on the, on the standard sort of token usage, so that it's uh, yes. if there is something. But, so that, but, that's the, yeah, the reasoning behind that. I can distinguish the number zero from all other numbers, so th that's not that's something that makes the number zero bad. Actually, it, it is just bad, Carson. What we um, the uh, the answer from John is that we are using it for specific. Um, I would say um, um, to, to identify a specific um, usage in the in the draft. So it's 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 not using in here, but we we are, we are associating a specific meaning to, to that. I think that we have some text in the draft, John, about this this part. Okay, I need to read that. Yeah, it, it's, it just is that each put needs to have a unique token, so you can't have two puts with the same token of zero. No, but you cannot have two puts with the token of four either. So there, yeah. there's nothing special about the number zero. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So it, uh, the, okay, so essentially each put has to have a different token, which could be token zero. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Back to to, to your comment about the request tag, Carson. I think the uh, the request tag is um, defined as a non-critical option, and what we are doing here is defined as a critical option. Do do, do you see any? I would say. Any conflict in the in the way we are defining the, uh, for instance, if we are using the request tag to uh, to to be used as the bit, for instance, and given that the request tag is a non-critical, and we are defining the all the the option, the uh, block three and block three as the critical ones, um, the, 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 wouldn't that be, I would say, um, an issue to to reuse the request tag for the purpose we have in this in this um, in this draft? Christian has an answer for that. Um, that's the, uh, that's no conflict there because you can say that if you implement block three or four, then you must also understand request tag, and basically treat request tag as critical for those clients that do block three and four. That's good. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any other thing else, or shall I move on? Move on. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, we just made some comments about the partial bodies being received, how we clean up from those. Uh, we note uh, that a 408 um, is not applicable here or as could cause problems because uh, blocks may arrive out of order. There's no longer any lock stepping. So uh, you know, block one can arrive after block two and we don't want a 408 generated. It just happens because the network delivered them in a different order. <clears throat> Whereas going for the 418, 
missing payloads instead of a 48, we can then indicate the missing blocks and uh, we can go into recovery scenario. And in that, there would be within the, the payload just a, a count and list of missing block numbers. It, to us, it doesn't make sense that we, we um, support well, that block three uses the 231 continue response rather. Questions? So the slide says 4.18. Is there a particular reason why you chose that? Um, only um, that it, it's, we, we've seen it as, as, it came up as a suggestion as an alternative. Uh, I think Christian may have been using it. So 4.18 was uh, um, April joke uh, style HTTP status code. That meant I am a teapot. So just just so you know what people will read into this. Um, I'm happy for it to be anything other than one that's already in use. Yeah, bike shed, but. Uh... Yep. Okay, I hear you. Thank you. Uh, this is where about your knowledge and wisdom of experience. Okay, so here it just is. This slide here just gives an example of. Uh, how we're going through and how we recover. It's a tidy up from the example that we used to have in the previous crop, uh, was, yeah, the previous draft. Any questions on that? Or is it fairly straightforward? It's something to get your teeth into. Uh, please, Christian. In, in combination with this example from this example and the previous slide on 231 not being used um, is there any possibility for the client to um, ask for an intermediate status or is that is that always just either 418 or the complete one like a like a positive response on on okay everything's good so far as opposed to I mean you're showing all nons here um, is is there any way the client can 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 ask for okay is is this is this now good so far? Ask for a for an explicit confirmation. Okay, interesting question. In the, in the actual uh, text, we have we talked about max payloads, and at the max payload point, we could either pause for a, a couple of seconds, or mm -hmm. we could send a confirmable at that point, so that one can recover the things that determine the things are okay. But we haven't really thought about the client giving the ability to be you know, health check in the middle of this transfer. Okay, I see. So, so basically, the 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 ACK from the con would be sufficient for the client to to keep pushing data. Yes. Or that or that client, yeah, or the or the client needs to uh, signal that he doesn't want any more. The, there, I, th I think there will need to be something like this if this is going to ever work over proxies, because the proxy might. The, the, you might be on the fast link to the proxy and the proxy is then on the slow link versus, okay, now I'm, I can't keep up with that pace. Yep. Um, so, so the con alone will probably not be sufficient. Okay. Yep, I'm taking a note of that. Got that. Yep, okay, good point. So moving on to the block four updates, again, the AB did move that bit is unassigned, whether it's, we want to keep it reserved, perhaps is a better expression rather than unassigned. Um, again, the block ID, it doesn't have to be a block ID. We could use um, the request tag or a response tag or something like that as an alternative, uh, but we can't use e tag because the client could send off a get request with the tag and we'll get back a 203 which is not basically saying I want the, this missing block or anything like that it just comes with, yep you've already got it here so well, the value you have is valid so we can't unfortunately use e tag at this point and again we've just said that uh, it one should have a non-zero bid value and it start off with initial value being random and must be different per body so we can separate them out and that bid can only be zero when requesting all the new, uh, a new body, a new sending out a new request is asking for a completely new set of body responses. Um, 
I'd last like to ask about the the e tag problem because, as I understand, if so, so there's kind of two situations. Either the client wants to know whether that's still a fre whether that representation is still fresh, then it sends an e tag along with it. If we assume that this is all using only e tags, and if it doesn't have a representation, it asks for some asks for something. It would not send any block ID or e tag at all and then get something back that has an e-tag that either matches the rest of what the client has or it doesn't. Um, adding in a block ID would allow the client to dig through historical representations of that resource. And unless that is the intention, um, I don't see why doing this with something different than e-tag would add any value. OK, so <clears throat> we'll take the scenario where we have an observe running on the server. Yep. So we get body number one and we get body number two. And if for some reason uh, we want to get a missing block in body number one, but body number two is arriving, um, how do we ask for something out of body number ah. one? So, so, so this is not this is about observation. Observation is inherently um, eventually consistent. If there is, if if there is a body two, and the client is already receiving part of body two, then all, all that matters is that body two arrives in its entirety and body one is obsolete by the time that body two comes along. If you're, if, if, if there is any interest in your application in having each and every individual body that is sent in an observation sent along, then observation as it is, is probably not what you want to use. Uh, I think it, it, it helps to think about the two cases here. So if you do a get or a fetch um, and uh, do the the very same get or fetch again, then you might run into 203, which is fine. The, the uh, server just tells you that you still have the same information there and, and you're done. If you do something like 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 a put um well something like a post or an eye patch uh, where you are waiting for an action result um then the, of course doing the same request twice can give you a different action result at least for patch not for eye patch and for post um so in that case uh you actually could be using the request tag as well, in the same role that you are using block ID now. I, again, okay. I'm I'm happy with the concept of uh, block four option being split into two separate options, and having the block ID equivalent of a separate option certainly again works for me. We just struggled with the e-tag, but I hadn't really thought through the representation of the observe. Uh, what you're talking about, if, if there's an interim patch or something in the middle, that might just upset things. I, I was specifically talking about uh, requests that don't return the current resource value, uh, which is where, where the e-tag comes in, uh, but requests that have an action result. Um, so. Uh, you, you say something like, uh, uh, make me a coffee, and then the coffee machine says, uh, in progress uh, will will take uh, 50 seconds. And uh, th that, that is, of course, a response that is very specific to the request. And, and that's something where you need a, a request tag to make sure you can split that up uh, in, in two. Uh, blocks because uh, really doing the same request again, make me a coffee is is not uh, the thing you want to do. Okay, so um, in my layman terms, <clears throat> if we do a post and a response is coming back, and we follow that by a separate post and a, se a separate response is coming back. Both responses require the use of block four. Then uh, we're just going to make sure we just get the right ones coming back for the right things. Should we need to right. do any recovery? You would you would already need a request tag 
in, in that case anyway. Yes. So I think we, we are covered by request tag, even though it's not not a number that is assigned by the server, it's a number that is assigned by the client. Right, but then we then what happens when we, when we run into an observed situation where we get two bodies coming back, do we need to differentiate between those two bodies? Yes, that's what we have the observed sequence number for. Okay, yep. So the, the only thing we might want to have a quick look at is whether the 24-bit observed sequence number is enough uh, here. But in, in principle, I think we are covered. I would have said 24 bits enough. It's a fairly large wraparound. That that still do, that still doesn't give you access to the previous representations, though. It just ensures that you have distinct have you know which which version this goes into. Ned, have you got any thoughts on this? I think we have to make a few examples. Uh, that's really hard to do on the fly in the meeting yeah okay well so certainly you know we'll take that away and try and think that to other examples where we you know if, if we can get away with not having the block id but we have that somehow represented in something else which is safe and secure then that's fine and i agree with yeah. okay So again, here's just next one is just an example of this uh, working and turning things are not working and asking for the bits that are missing based on uh, the block floor with it block four with the bid information in there. Which then kind of takes us to uh, further discussion and you know, are we in a place for this being a working group document? Should it be adopted? Take it forward. Well, saying that we adopt it as a work group document has, has two uh, connotations. Uh, one is that we as a working group are interested in, in doing work on this. And uh, I think it has been demonstrated that this is the case. Um, so that, that, that should be obvious. Uh, the other question is whether we are making a statement that this is exactly the, the way, uh, the, the approach we want to use here. And um, I think uh, we, we have seen during the development of this so far that, that, that there are some, some uh, bends and corners in the development of this as we get new ideas. Uh, so I would expect that this is still still possible, uh, even though I think we, we are slowly converging now. So, so what we have now looks pretty good uh, for me as a protocol design. Um, I'm still trying to understand the, the implications on the ecosystem, uh, but uh, I think that, that takes a little bit more time anyway. Marco, I don't know if you want to uh, mention something. But, um, Please go ahead. Um, in, okay, great. Uh, so, <clears throat> in general lines, I see why uh, work shouldn't continue on this document even before any kind of working group adoption. Um, is the adoption of the of the document something that you need urgently uh, at this point, or is it something that could wait a bit longer? Because um, as it is, it seems to be a still working progress. There's a few things that need to be uh, fixed, and it hasn't been presented in a proper. When these interims are proper, and, and the situation is kind of a bit, um, maybe a bit strange with the whole remote, permanent remote work, and so on. But I would like maybe a full presentation of the draft in front of. Uh, sorry, uh, 
uh, just a second. Uh, so it, it would be nice to get a full presentation of the draft in one of the meetings, maybe uh, um, discuss a bit more, uh, fix it a bit more, and then uh, call for adoption. I don't see why we shouldn't have it in the working group uh, in principle, but I don't see also why it should be so urgent. Because we have plenty of all the documents that uh, require the attention and reviews and, you know, general uh, care for uh, already in core anyways. Thank you, Jaime, for this. I think that's, um, this is what we have, I would say, indicated last time is that we we uh, we have another work, working of document which we have in the DOTS working group, which is the telemetry, and that we are targeting to have, I would say, the, in the working group last call by, I would say, by, by July. So um, what we wanted is that to make sure that, I, I, I would say, the extension that will be, I would say, that we are discussing here if there is, I would say, there is a probability to be adopted in the working group, and we will try, I would say, to officially integrate the comment from the working group and the um, the design modification that we will make, I would say, before um, will be will reflect what you as core working group want us to uh, to do. So, um, having, I would say, this um, this um, this adoption call at least in the core working group will, will give us this, I would say, this um, this right signal, and also for us. It's also to reconsider whether we will add, I would say, the dependency in our core, in our telemetry specification to this to this specification. So otherwise, um, that will be the the, uh, the other plan that I have mentioned last time is that the, uh, the telemetry specification in the dots working on, which is the client, which is the, the, which is the one that will use this specification. Um, we will, I would say, judge it without without, I would say, this 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 part of the um, of the um, uh, of the work. So. Um, I, I see. I would say uh, pro and cons in for 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 in the, in the two approaches. We can we can we can continue. Um, I would say happily to continue this, this. I would say the integrating all the comments from you, and this is really appreciated and helpful for us um, in this in this in, in, in this area as individual. Uh, but if we can just do it officially, that will be uh, for me better and will give me as an editor of the telemetry specification in the Dutch working group the, the right um, uh, signal whether I will add or not any normative dependence here to, to, to this one. So that's the, um, I would say, to give you the full, the full picture uh, we have so far. So I'm assuming that the normative, normativeness uh, is not just because we are not dropping or not. I mean, I guess there is some normative test one, one way or another, right? Uh, it's, uh, if we have... Uh, information. Uh, oh, sorry. So, so, sorry, Jaime? It, it cannot be just... A Please change information if there is some mandatory to implement text. I suppose. In fact, if you if you have a text which say you may or optional implement, you need to set it as a normative. Even if you, if you are using it as, as an optional feature. So if we include in the in the telemetry specification, for instance, that an optional feature which is defined in this document, and we are not sure that it will, be, it will progress. We, we will need to set it as a normative reference, even if it is an optional feature. If you have a may, for instance, in a, in, in a, in a draft, you need to, uh, to to give it in the normative uh, as a normative reference and not an informative one. So that's why I'm avoiding to have normative text for, for so far for this point into this one. Uh, if we want to have to solve all the issues we have for the telemetry for the completeness, we need to, it will be good to have to have this this piece of work done as soon as possible. I can guarantee, yeah, I can, even if it will be adopted immediately, I cannot guarantee uh, uh, a high pace of work because it's not just depending on the uh, on, on us, basically. And as I said, we have a lot of documents. I, I, what do you mean by high pace, by the way? Because in, in ITF standards, that varies a lot. <laughs> yeah. It depends, but at, at least, at least, yeah. So for me, I don't, I don't want to, to, to wait two or three years for for a document before ah. that is discussion. To no, I don't, I don't want that, and I don't want to, uh, yeah. To uh, so if if it is, um, I would say, a matter of, of six months, that that will be fine. So if we if we have an, an adoption earlier, that means that we will have at least uh, some time so that we can have the specification that will integrate the, uh, I would say. Um, the comments from the working group and try to convert something which is really, I would say, mature and stable and will, uh, I would say, solve the various corner uh, uh, pieces that we, we didn't have investigated so far. So more we wait for, for having this adoption call, um, so more delay to get more 
eyes and more reviews on it. So that's the, I know this is a dilemma and you, I also I hear you that there is other documents, but I'm just giving you the, the for, for, for situation from, from our, uh, from, from where we are sitting. Yeah, so I mean, in, uh, I, I would, so in principle, I could think of uh, giving a presentation of the document in the current form in the next ITF, which is in July, in a month. And then uh, during the ITF or a few weeks later, uh, in the adoption call, but uh, I'm pretty open for others in the call to give right now, to give their opinion as well. If that is something that they, they, they could see working out or if they would prefer uh, to slow down a bit or go faster. So <clears throat> my view is that we should allow other working groups to, to do useful work on top of COET. And if that involves uh, coming up with new options, that's why we have this extension point in COET. And uh, I think we, we are currently having a very productive discussion about how to do this in a way that doesn't damage the, the existing COEP ecosystem. So I, I don't see a big problem uh, with adopting it if that helps the other working group do their work. I would also like to point out that by giving the extra time till July, uh, we would be able to review in more detail. I mean, we, we are giving people a few weeks to provide feedback. Um, anyway, Marco, do you have any thoughts? I, are you still there? I just got a weird message from WebEx. I'm here. The Wi-Fi died. I was catching up from the minutes. Um, okay. Yeah, just to bring in another option that was raised um, at the previous interim on this. Uh, Mohamed, you mentioned that, um, uh, well, uh, as an extreme alternative, this can also wait possibly for a later uh, update in time of the telemetry document when things are more stable, possibly in core. Would that be still a viable alternative? Yes, this this one it it will be. I would say this is what what I said is that um, if there is if we don't see I would say um, signals that we will have something soon, uh, we won't. Uh, we will just add I would say a statement in the in the in the telemetry specification to say that we are aware this is an issue, and this current version of the specification won't solve it, and this is for f future. And then in the future we can we can have something that will update that, that, that part. That that's what I have said um, last time, and this is what I have repeated um, um, in my earlier comment to say that uh, I am that that's why I, I say that I we won't add any normative text there until we have something which is um, that we are um, I would say sure we will get from the um, from from I would say the um, the co-working group or uh, in the dots working group. So yeah, that's. That's, that's still an option for me, but it's not my preferable one. What I want is that we, this is an issue that we think that this is, I would say, important for the, uh, the telemetry work. If we can work together in order to make some progress and to, I would say, um, to, to solve the problem we have there with um, full alignment or, your, or the concept that you are very familiar with and the, in, in, in compl I would say, um, uh, that will satisfy you without um, destroying other part of the ecosystem that's that's what my my favorite option, and um, that's why I am really open to the discussion. And as you uh, know, I, we have already worked in the past for the hop limit and so on. So we are responsive to comments. We are, I would say, in a positive spirit so to to, to collaborate. So my favorite is to to see the, the specification work advance. Um, if not, uh, I am I am afraid that yes, the the other I would say the alternate option to to go forward without having this um, adoption is is uh, will will be the. Uh, the way to, to, to proceed. Christian. One question I'd like to pose in the context of adopting this document is what its scope should be. For there is, there's a few things around blockwise that maybe don't work in an ideal way. And if we, if this is supposed to be the successor to blockwise, like say a blockwise biz, um, then there will be the question of what other features do others want in there and chances are this will grow. Um, and the other direction this could take is to be a single, say, say a single um, 
focused way of doing a few more things than than the original blockwise can without um, being the new thing that solves all the problems around blockwise. Um, I think we should pick a direction for this by the time we are adopting it to ensure that we are on the same page. And the answer to that would also influence how long this whole thing will take through the working group. For example, with respect to the, the streaming extension that was in the Dash 01. Yes, and I fully agree with you, with, with you, Christian, and thank you again for uh, raising this comment. Um, so this is why we have removed that, that part from, the, um, for, from the, um, the, the new version, because we wanted something which is really focused. And in, in, in the last meeting, we told that there is some, I would say, some um, tension to, to include something more generic than the dots use case. And that's why we have added that streaming case there. But um, with, with your comment, I really agree with you that, yeah, so whether we need to, to, to keep focused so that we can make some progress or to agree to add new stuff. And I fully agree that you do that we need to, to, to be focused. And if this use case, the streaming one is interesting for you for the generic use case, please just record it and add it to uh, when the, the working group will have to revise, I would say, more generally the, this, this, this area. But yeah, we, our, our, our intent is, is really to keep focused and uh, to solve this specific problem with the applicability statement that we, we have added there, we can also add more text to see that this is really specific to um, uh, and not advised or, or whatever language that you want. So this is not something that is really recommended in the generic, generic um, uh, use case. That's also something that we are really open to discuss. So uh, a good idea would be whether we want to discuss it right now on the mailing list or in a different meeting. Um, in principle, I doubt that we can perform uh, or that we can do a blockwise piece in six months. Uh, I think that would be pretty ambitious. I, I mean, I'm trying to measure a bit the energy of the group and the, the, the time allocation and considering the amount of drafts that we have. Um, uh, an extension for a specific use case, that's maybe another story, but I do not know if that is the direction of the group. So, so far, I think uh, Christian and Karsten and Ahmed and I, uh, we all have voiced uh, our opinions. I would like to hear all the people as well if, if they have an opinion on this topic. Since we are on the call. Well, I think I said mine already. So, I mean, we can also take it uh, on the mailing list, this, this discussion. Um, I think I think adoption of a, of a specific use case oriented document should be feasible uh, in, in a month in, in during the ITF. I mean, I would be really happy if you could present the draft in, during the meeting. That would be useful for those who haven't attended the interims. And it could also give more time for people to make an opinion, I think. Uh, Marco, what do you think? Agree. Agree or yeah, agree. Yeah. Um, uh, is this something uh, satisfactory, Matt? Having the discussion on July, and then they're having uh, the call for adoption. Oh, yeah, uh, it's, it's... The... <laughs> yeah, sorry. So it'll be, the idea will be like discussion in July during the next ITF. Uh, in principle, an extension for a specific use case, unless the group really wants to do a blockwise beast. And uh, in, in which case, I think you should have probably just uh, an informative reference in your document. And I do not know what the group will say because they are not saying anything concrete right now. So uh, the mailing list also works, so we can have it on the mailing list too. It, 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 you know, that's, I don't, I don't, yeah, so, so that's, yeah, that's an option. It's really your call to, uh, to, to make and they, I will, I would say, uh, but I don't, I don't think that there is a point to, to wait for the, the ATF meeting to, to make this kind of, I would say, the discussion. So <laughs> uh, we have the mailing list, the mailing list are there for, I would say, trigger discussions. Um, I don't see why we cannot do it right now, but it's, it's again, as I, as I mentioned, it's your, it's, it's really your call and the, I will follow what, whatever advice you, you, you will give for us, but. 
I'm just worried that if we do it now, not everybody has actually read the drafts. So um, you will get the same answers that you have right now, and that will be only a handful of people. So you, uh, I, I would guess that you have more chances to get in more feedback uh, if we give people a bit of time to to read the, the drafts and make an opinion. But it could happen that you don't get more feedback. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm helping or not, but uh, uh, I would I would wager that you will get more uh, positive feedback if we wait just a bit so that people can actually read and and have an opinion, an informed opinion on the drafts. Okay, so that, that, that okay. So uh, at least for our side, what we will do is that we will, uh, yeah, we will update the, uh, I would say, um, the draft to reflect what, um, the comments that we uh, we received today. Uh, we will get back to uh, to Christian and also to Carson about the uh, the use of the request tag, uh, and to 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 see if we can glue these pieces to together what we have what we have so far, and uh, then we'll uh, communicate. Inform the working group the uh, when the, this new version will be available, and then we can we can take it there. That sounds great to me, uh, Marco. Good. Great. So, um, any other discussions on the topic of dots? Because we have a request uh, by Francesca uh, on advertising co-op technology, and a request by. Jim on a status update of the stateless document. I don't know if we have to do it right now, uh, but as far as I'm concerned, we could give you the even more than five minutes, Francesca, if you want uh, to go ahead. I don't know if you have a slides. Hi. No, I don't have slides. Okay. It's just uh, right. informal. Uh, just to talk a little bit about the co-op.technology side, and you might have seen that I sent an email to the mailing list a while ago. And the idea was to add the tab. So this is not a core, I want to say this is not a core working group item, but it is related to a core working group item, which is co-op. And, and it's Karsten who is uh, maintaining and hosting uh, this co-op.technology website. So um, I I tried to, yes, that's the, uh, the pull request that I did for adding a security tab. And since I got a couple of comments offline i thought i would talk about it here and um karsten told me already that uh, so we have some communication with karsten about this but we haven't um, um we won't be able to merge the pull request right now so i i think karsten you and i we probably need to uh talk offline if um if we are going to make this um we're, we're going to merge this which you seem positive about. Yes. Yeah. So I I um, volunteer to uh, to uh, um, change my HTML pull request to a markdown pull request if you uh, uh, put the markdown um, online somewhere on a GitHub. Yeah, I should do that. Um, yeah, and and maybe it might be good because there are other pull requests, so it might be good to tell other people that. Your pull request has not been merged just because, yeah, that's uh, the Kasten's website is originally Markdown. And yeah, so he would want to transform your pull request to Markdown before merging it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, to point this out and say, uh, for example, Thomas um, volunteered to, to, to add some text about DTLS and Really happy about that. Uh, it's still my my pull request, and it's still gonna go through Karsten approval afterward. But uh, feel free to to add to my text if you um, if you if you want to. Sure, sure. Let me know when when the Markdown version is ready. And then do that. That that would probably be easier uh, to to do it in Markdown directly. Otherwise, I will translate it at some point, I guess. Okay, I will, I will contact you offline and we will discuss the details. Yeah. So okay. <clears throat> I hope I, I'm able to put this up uh, next week. Um, that's great. So the 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 situation the real situation is slightly worse. 
because the the part of the site actually is written in Hamel. So it's Hamel with embedded markdown and ah, okay. I think we have to clean this up at some point. But mm. that's that's the current situation. And okay. I will talk whether I can clean this up quickly or we live with this uh, hybrid uh, for a while. <laughs> but I think all, all new text really should be written in, in uh, Markdown, markdown. to yeah. uh, get easy uh, maintenance. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to just advertise. Um, I also have another point um, on the agenda, if there is time, chairs. Yes, there is. Go ahead. Thank you. So this is mostly a question to Jim as our COSI expert. Um, Jim, if you're around. I hope you are. Okay, good. Um, so this is about the group score document. So just for status update for anybody interested, uh, we are uh, working on the group score document and we will be submitting a new version soon. And one of the updates is that we finally did the change about using the COSI capabilities um, instead of defining our own registry. And while we were implement uh, while we were implementing this change, we realized that uh, right now we are only using the COSI capabilities from the uh, COSI key type registry. And um, the question, because right now the COSI capabilities of the algorithms doesn't have any, any field that is not in the COSI key type. Right now it's only the key type in, in that column there. So we were wondering if, do you think that in the future there might be other, um, other algorithms that do register their parameters that will not be found in the COSI key type capabilities. I believe there's actually one today, although it's an algorithm you would never use. Is there? With yeah, the hash algorithms, the hash signatures. Uh huh. Um, let's see. I, I didn't see that right now because. I only saw that in section 10, so I'm looking at section 10.2 of changes to COSI algorithms registry. And this is where you introduce the capabilities column. And you say that the new column is populated with the array, including key type for all current non-provisional registrations. So wait, maybe I can post it to the chat. Jabber. Oh, I guess I put that in in the in the key, not the. Yeah. So in the key, there are other. Yeah, exactly. There are other parameters, but in the algorithms, for right now, it's only the key type. So right now, in the OSCOR group com, we only took the capabilities from key type, but now we're wondering maybe in the future there will be algorithms that will will register capabilities specific to the algorithm and not the key. And then the question we have is, should we have both arrays? Yes. OK, so you think we should have both arrays. OK. Yeah. And now, now we have to talk between authors and uh, bring up a proposal about, should we merge these arrays? Should we have a, a sequence of those two arrays? Should we uh, remove the duplicates, parameters, all of that? not remove the duplicate parameters. OK, so your advice is keep uh, everything. OK, then I You're think. You're not transmitting this in general, so yeah. No, we are just using it um, in the security context and then in the external AAD. So OK, that's great. That's very helpful. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. So this, might, this is probably going to be a change that will um, change the implementation of OSCORE GroupCom for whoever has an implementation of OSCORE GroupCom. But yes, will. We, will, uh, <laughs> we will post it to the mailing list when, when this is done. So that was all from me. Thank you. Thank you. And...
There was also another point raised by uh, Jim on Jabber uh, about the status of the stateless document. So the last thing I could see on the list was a reply from Ben Kaduk on the latest revision of Klaus that seemed to wrap up the discussion, actually, uh, saying that an open point was okay. Uh, maybe Klaus has more news on that? Sure. Yes, I can give a quick status update. Um, so from the ISG comments that I have received, I haven't addressed the one from Roman Danilev yet. And on Ben Kadok's um, review, I have uh, gone uh, question by question, and the questions that I have come through have uh, all resolutions, but there are a few more uh, points that Ben raised that I haven't addressed yet. dealt with Eric's discuss? Except for Romans and Ben's, I believe I have resolved all other ISD comments. If there's one I missed, then please send me a pointer. Thank you. There seems to be um, water. Sorry. Thomas and I need to drop right now. So I hope somebody can continue taking the minutes, please. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that. No problem. Uh, there seems to be no other pending points actually in the chat. Uh, so if there's no other big point open that we can discuss today, uh, we may even close the meeting now. Any other point you wanted to discuss today? Ivalo is mentioned in a core conf update. All right. I, I need to drop, uh, let you be. Uh, thank you for the time, everybody. And thank you, Marco, for continuing, please. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Ivalo, please. Uh, yes, so I I pushed a new version of the SID document and uh, for me the only remaining question is uh, whether we should rename SID to uh, YSID uh, as it was suggested uh, I think by Andy and uh, there were some people having uh, voicing support for this. Uh, I also talked with uh, Alexander Pelov and uh, he was not very keen on the idea. So I asked him to voice his opinion on the mailing list so that it's uh, documented, but uh, that's uh, the situation there. I believe... Um, I believe um, there, there is a middle ground there. <clears throat> so we could still call the thing SIDS. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to change all our software that talks about SIDS. But we could use a long form of Yang SIDS. So when, whenever we are talking about SIDS outside the specific confines of, of the document, we could call them Yang SIDS. And uh, that would make sure that they are not confused with the, the SRV6 uh, things that are getting too much discussion these times. Um, and uh, But inside the document, we could still say SID. Yeah, I, that sounds as a good solution. And uh, I will suggest it as a way forward. I guess people should be happy with it, and uh, it's, it sounds good to me. So apart from that, I updated uh, had, uh, uh, Komi, uh draft in GitHub, so there is, uh, I believe, all the comments are handled there, uh, including moving the um, media types outside of this specification for uh, some cases as it was requested. Uh, so 
yes, that's it. If uh, anyone is interested, please uh, review the new versions or uh, I, if I don't have any new comments, I will publish uh, a new version of all the documents. You can also review them at that point of time. Just let me know. So that's it on my side. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, we still have time, just in case anyone wants to raise any more point. So when do we have our next meeting? In two weeks, and that will be the last one before uh, ITF 108. I'd like to talk about the, the um, RD changes that I hopefully have text for until then, and we'll try to make them available a bit before so that, for example, Carsten, you could have a look at them. All right. Okay, so anything else for today? Good, then thank you all for a nice meeting. Talk to you again in two weeks. Thank you all. Thanks. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Oh, 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 oh.